This is Cougase here, Adam. Tell her please to, she doesn't have to run. Mrs. Cougay is in the house. Hey, Deb. Hey, Deb. Debbie. I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that intro with Mrs. Kuge was not in my plan. <laughs> Welcome, Mrs. Kuge. Thank you so much. Wow. Good morning. Rabbi Myers, Somerset County Commissioners Dawson and Walker, Pennsylvania State Senator Pat Stefano, FBI Director Ray, visitors with us here and those viewing from afar. Welcome. I'd also like to welcome all of the Memorial's ambassadors and the sailors from the USS Somerset attending this morning ceremony as well. It is also my privilege to welcome the many families and friends of the passengers and crew members of Flight 93. We are truly honored today by your presence, and please know you have our sincere gratitude and appreciation for your ongoing efforts to be here this day and your tremendous efforts and support every day to remember and share your loved ones with the world. My name is Stephen Clark, superintendent of this very special place. The Flight 93 story shared here is now interwoven into an important lesson about our nation's history. It is a memorial dedicated to honoring the memory of 40 individuals who, on September 11, 2001, acted with such bravery and without regard for themselves, ultimately thwarting an attack on our nation's capital. This morning, I would also like to extend a very special welcome to the thousands, as I understand it, more than 30,000 students and teachers who have enrolled from across the country as part of the Memorial's first ever National Day of Learning. In partnership with the Friends of Flight 93, we welcome you and your classrooms to learn about this important day, and thank you for joining us for this moment of remembrance. The education of September 11th is critical to the pledge many of us have made to remember the nation's largest international terrorist attack on American soil and the innocent 2,977 people who were taken from us. There have been many words spoken and speeches delivered at this hallowed ground, but one continues to resonate with me today. It was a speech given by then former President George W. Bush. He attended the 2011 permanent memorial dedication and while reflecting 
on who these 40 people were and how we might continue to remember them, he said, quote, for generations, people will study the flight, the story of Flight 93. They will learn that individual choices make a difference, that love and sacrifice can triumph, happened above this Pennsylvania field, ranks among the most courageous acts in American history, end quote. 22 years ago today, when the United States was attacked, heroes emerged in New York, at the Pentagon, and aboard Flight 93. The 40 passengers and crew members of Flight 93 collectively stopped their hijacked plane from reaching its intended target. Their actions unquestionably saved untold number of lives and preserved the U.S. Capitol, the symbol and the center of our democracy. The Flight 93 example to the world on this very important day of observance is a story we are passing on to our American future. As we come together this morning, let us begin this moment by rising, as you are able, for the Pledge of Allegiance led by high school seniors Emma Furco and William Brandt of the Shanksville Stony Creek School District, Class of 2024. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you, Emma and William. Both Emma and William represent the National Honor Society and the Student Council from Shanksville. As I understand it, upon graduation this spring, Emma will be undertaking mechanical engineering at Slippery Rock University, and William plans to pursue a major in zoology at Bucknell. Congratulations. We're fortunate to have the community of Shanksville represented here throughout today's moment of remembrance. At the conclusion of our observance, firefighters from the Shanksville Volunteer Fire Department will open the ceremonial gate, providing a salute for family members as they enter the sacred ground. Their department response is one tie of many to the World Trade Center in New York the Pentagon, and the Flight 93 responses, representing one of our unparalleled responses by first responders in our nation's history. We remember the sacrifice of 441 first responders who lost their lives in the efforts to save thousands of people that morning. I'd like to ask all of you to please Take a moment this month, today, to recognize or thank a member from your response community for their service. Helping to honor the 40 passengers and crew members is Jacob Miller, an alumnus of Shanksville Stony Creek High School, class of 2003. Then a junior in high school, Jacob bore a firsthand witness to the crash of Flight 93. Later, he interned at Flight 93 National Memorial and today serves as the curator for the Somerset Historical Center, where he helps to educate all generations about Somerset County history. Mr. Miller will lead the reading of their names, joined by family members who have made their journey here from around the country to read the name of their loved one. Joining Jacob and family members this morning 
are Joy Knapp and Jan Loney. Joy is retired from a 27-year career in public education as an art teacher, many of which were a short distance from the memorial at Shanksville Stony Creek School District, where she taught kindergarten through high school. On 9-11, Joy was the shepherd for a classroom of third graders at Shanksville School when Flight 93 crashed. Joy continues to share her passion for art today as a professional glass jewelry artist. Reflecting on the days after 9-11, Joy shared, quote, though we are a very small rural school and sometimes feel isolated from the rest of the world, we are indeed connected with others and are not alone, end quote. Jan Loney is a metal artist from Pittsburgh. Following 9-11, Jan was commissioned as a resident artist to work with the Shanksville kindergarten through 12th grade school to create a sculpture with students for a memorial in response to 9-11. Jan believes, and I quote, was probably one of my most difficult residencies, end quote. Joy worked extremely close with Jan to incorporate the students in a collaborative sculpture process, letting the students' voices guide the project. Jan believes, focusing on how people helped one another in 2001 through casting some 500 hand imprints of the student body, the faculty and staff at the school, all who experienced 9-11, continues to send a positive message then and to the current generations about how we face tremendous adversity. The sculpture entitled Hands reminds us all of the difference we can make. After each name is read this morning, Mrs. Nepp and Miss Loney will ring the bells of remembrance in the memory of the 40 passengers and crew members of Flight 93. To conclude our moment of remembrance, Rabbi Hazan Jeffrey Myers of the Tree of Life Congregation in Pittsburgh will offer an interfaith prayer of closure, healing, and peace. I invite the family seated here afterwards to the sacred ground for a private wreath laying at the site. Thank you. Christian Adams. Todd M. Beamer. Alan 
Anthony Bevan. Mark Bingham. Diora Francis Bodley. Sandy Waugh Bradshaw. Marion R. Britton. Thomas E. Burnett, Jr. William Joseph Cashman. My sister Georgine Rose Corrigan Marisay. Patricia Cushing. A wonderful father brother, uncle, my cousin, Captain Jason M. Dahl. Joseph 
DeLuca. Patrick Joseph Driscoll. Edward Porter felt. Jane C. Folger. My sister, Colleen L. Fraser. Andrew Sonny Garcia. Jeremy Logan Glick. Kristen Osterholm White Gould. Best friend and sister, Wanda Anita Green. Lauren Catuzzi Grancolis and Unborn Child.
Donald Freeman Green. Linda Gronland. Richard Gadagno. My uncle, Leroy Homer. My son, Toshia Kuge. from Chester A. Moore Elementary School and Westwood High School in Fort Pierce, Florida, C.C. Ross Lyles. Hilda Marson. Waleska Martinez. Nicole Carol Miller. <laughs> Louis Joseph Naki. Donald Arthur Peterson.
Jean Hoadley Peterson. Mark David Rothenberg. Christine Ann Snyder. John Talignani. Honor Elizabeth Wainio. And to my cousin, Debbie Jacobs Welsh. May we never forget what they taught us that day. God bless them. Distinguished guests, family, friends. My name is Jeffrey Myers, and I'm the rabbi of Tree of Life in Pittsburgh. It is my honor and privilege to offer a concluding prayer at this sacred moment on this holy ground. Within the Jewish faith, our tradition is upon remembering our loved ones that we recite a memorial prayer. I will chant it first in the Hebrew and then translate it for you in the English. If you're able to rise, please do so. Nishwat 
Shalom, al mich gewotem, no mar, amen. Exalted, compassionate God, grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and the pure to the souls of all of our beloved who we remember this day who have gone to their eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that our loved ones find perfect peace in your tender embrace. Their memory enduring as inspiration for commitment to their ideals and integrity in our lives. May their souls thus be bound up in the bond of life. May they always rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. You may be seated. We've gathered today to remember what was, what is, and what will never be. We recall the sacrifice of 40 air travelers and crew who epitomized the home of the brave so that we can live in the land of the free. We recognize that an entire generation has been born that did not experience 9-11. Ours is the gift of memory, and with memory comes responsibility, the determination to share our stories with this next generation so that through them our loved ones continue to live. We mourn the generations that will never be because of the loss of these precious souls, but yet are grateful because their bravery enabled untold human beings to be born who could learn to appreciate and honor their valor. Eternal God, we pray to you for strength, perseverance, and compassion upon this 22nd commemoration. We invoke your name to guide us to become the nation that we are capable of, a beacon of light and hope to those oppressed and forsaken across the globe. Guide our leaders to promote justice justly. Strengthen the hands of those who serve and our military so that they may complete their missions in safety and security and return home safely. Enable us to raise a generation of children endowed with your spirit of goodness who will love their neighbor as themselves, who will strive to eliminate all forms of racism, bigotry, and prejudice. May your wings of eternity embrace in comfort all those gathered here today to mourn and remember a spouse, a parent, a child, a sibling, a family member, a friend. We read the following in the last five verses of Psalm 90. Relent, O God, how long must we suffer? Have compassion upon your servants. Grant us your love in the morning 
that we may sing in gladness all our days. Match days of sorrow with days of joy, equal to the years we have suffered. Then your servants will see your power. Their children will know your glory. May the Lord our God show us compassion and establish the work of our hands. May the work of our hands be firmly established. May all those that we remember today, may their memories be for a blessing. And let us all say, Amen.